Thank you, everybody, for coming to our Pocket Radar Expo Theater presentation today. All you coaches here are what have made our company what it is today, and we really appreciate you being here and listening to us talk about this with our great panelists. Um, my name is Steve Goody. I am the CEO of Pocket Radar and one of the co-founders. Um, and why we're here today is to have uh, these great panelists up here that are probably many of these guys you recognize as coaches that have been around for quite a few years doing a lot of amazing things. We have Coach Corral here from University of Missouri. We have uh, Perry Husband, who is a multi-year MLB coach and consultant, uh, been decades of work doing tech and coaching together, really great guy. And Jerry Weinstein, who I think you all know with the Colorado Rockies organization. I'm gonna talk a little bit about who we are. I think a lot of you already know that, so bear with me on this, but we're Pocket Radar. Um, this is uh, great to be here actually for our 10th ABCA convention, so it seems like it was yesterday, but it's been a decade and it's been fun every single time talking to our coaches and our customers one-on-one. -on -one. It's a great, great deal and we're a proud partner of ABCA as well, which has uh, been really another great reward. Um, in that decade that we've been around, we have been able to create a line of pocket radar products and other products that are radar related for all kinds of speed measurement applications. Um, four of those products are, uh, actually five are in sports related ap applications. And um, the other ones are actually used for a lot of different things like law enforcement. Uh, we pride ourselves on uh, the accuracy of our products. That's how we were able to do law enforcement products. You have to be pretty darn accurate to do that and get certified in a laboratory. So we were able to take that accuracy uh, and bring that into our sports products as well as the convenience and ease of use that you, many of you are already familiar with, uh, and the affordability of, is a huge factor uh, of our product line. Um, uh, let's see. Now, one thing you, many of you know, because uh, a lot of you have owned our products over the years, is that w every generation of sports product that we do, and actually any of our products, uh, we listen to our customers, we listen to you guys. Everything you see in our new products are a direct result of getting your feedback and listening uh, to what you want in features. So hopefully you keep seeing uh, things that you like and that you asked us to do. Uh, so we really appreciate that. Thanks, thanks very much for that. Um, I want to spend a little bit of time touching on our newest generation product, which we have down in our booth. And some, a lot of you already know about it. And it's our third generation sports product. It's called the Smart Coach Radar. Um, one of the main reasons uh, we invited our panelists to join us because these guys have been using this product for a few months now. And I'm an engineer and I always love to see what our, our, our great coaches do with our new technology. And these guys are gonna spend some time telling you about what they've done with the new Smart Coach. I mean, touching on it really quickly, the big evolution here for us, and it was a big, it was a big, big leap for us, is that you know, our radars are these, our pocket size that you all know very well, this four ounce little radar gun that's as accurate as you can buy on the market. And a lot of you said, well, I want to hook this to my smartphone. I want to be able to do things with data and video and a lot more. So we spent the last couple of years working on our app and we have dropped our app for the first time. Uh, the app is an optional thing. You can use this new Smart Coach radar standalone like the ones you've used before. No problem, works that way. But when you pair it with the app, it actually transforms into an entire video radar training system with many capabilities that you'll hear a lot of from these guys and you can come to our booth and see more of later but touching on some of the highlights allows you to use the video capabilities of your smartphone or your tablet android or apple to actually document the mechanics of the athlete's performance and have the speed wirelessly uh, go from the radar unit over bluetooth into the app and into the video so now you get a permanent documented record of what mechanics produce what outcome and those are saved in a history perpetually. So you can always go back and retrieve what effort created what outcome. So um, just lots of powerful new features. Um, and I think I'm gonna just turn it over now to Coach Corral, but before I do that, uh, the way we like to do it, if you guys don't mind, is we wanna hold the questions to a segment we have at the end, have the panelists run through uh, each of their sections first. We'll do some Q&A. And then uh, they've all generously agreed to come back to our booth later for extended conversations. If you see something you like, you want to talk more one-on-one -on -one with them, learn more, they're going to be hanging out in our booth for the last hour of the trade show. 
um, or maybe a little less than that. Actually, it might be only uh, 15 to 20 minutes, but there'll be time after as well. So we'll get to all your questions, hopefully. Um, and with that, I, I think I'll let Coach Corral take over. I'm just setting my uh, uh, timer on because I know I have about eight minutes to get what I need to say uh, about this wonderful product. Uh, and that's pretty tough. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do uh, with this uh, wonderful device. And, and the thing that I really like about it is it does, uh, as the top point says, it does save uh, us time as coaches uh, to, one, uh, give our players the valuable feedback that they need uh, to improve their, their skills. Um, but quick, um, went to uh, eye doctor. Eye doctor said, give me your insurance. I put it back in my uh, pocket for my wallet, pulled out to have my pocket radar. The thing was always with me. It was always with me. And that's, not, that's a true story. I felt like a, a, a meathead uh, doing that, but it was there. Uh, I made sure I took my pocket radar with me. The thing that I'll tell you is that uh, the audio feedback that this uh, features, it, it will, when you throw a certain speed, uh, it will tell you what that uh, current velocity is. And, uh, you know, on, I've got a few video clips that I had them uh, upload. And they're one of my favorite bullpens to operate uh, at the University of Missouri is a front to back pen. I want my guys, like a carnival game, I want them to have an understanding of what they're throwing, and I want them to be able to guess their speed. And uh, if you haven't done this, I would highly recommend it because it's almost an innate ability. Once you maximally throw a pitch, throw it as hard as you possibly can. And when you top out that speed, asking a guy to dial it down six miles an hour, which Perry will tell you is a very good uh, initial spread, uh, that feel is very easy. And you'll be surprised how your guys guess the right speeds. And the audio feedback is outstanding. So when my guys, in saving time, when I'm not available to be there with them in that pen, that audio feedback, them saying uh, intently, I am going to throw this pitch 89 miles an hour, and the feedback will give them their actual speed. And it teaches my guys how to really pitch the front and back part of the plate. And having that type of feel is very valuable when you think about pitch strategy. We can talk about that in the booth if you'd like. Um, but uh, the audio feedback is, uh, is uh, an MVP for me. Uh, and there's a lot of MVPs in here that, that are tied with what this can do. Like I said, it's a, an easy to use, uh, easy setup. You set up uh, the pocket radar. It, it comes with a little uh, holder that you can put on a tripod. I've got a little mini tripod that I'll put somewhere between the catcher and uh, my pitcher. And we set the, uh, the phone, the smartphone, off to the side and uh, let it do its thing. Uh, another uh, clips, you see uh, my guys doing catch net pens, and uh, we can go with the next. And up, uh, we already saw those, uh, the other, this is a front and back pen. Um, on this app, uh, well, this is uh, its accuracy. How accurate it is in comparison with, say, the uh, Rapsodo, uh, the velocity reads that it gets when you compare it to the stalker, to the, uh, the feedback that we get from Rapsodo, um, it's immense uh, and deadly accurate. Um, the thing that I like, uh, what you saw there was an actual recruiting video that I sent to our recruiting coordinator, Lance Rhodes, who uh, was at another part of uh, uh, Atlanta uh, watching another play. And I said, hey, I really, uh, what do you think of this guy? And it's, it's pretty neat to see a guy when you're talking about recruiting, and you're, especially to your recruiting coordinator, and you're saying, I really like this guy. Well, you better have more than what, you, than what a pretty delivery you might have or whatever. When, they, when Lance saw that uh, velocity read, he said, oh, yeah, this might be something we look at. That communication system filtering from our head coach, Steve Beezer, to uh, myself, to Lance Rhodes, uh, to the three of us was very, made much easier by having evidence of what we liked and how we went about it. Um, the editing feature that you find on this app, it's very easy to use. And one of the things I'll tell you, a lot of the people that, uh, that are talking about old school, new school, uh, it, if you just take the time to understand new school, you'll find that it's, really, it's not as hard as we really think. And you can apply your experiences with what you already know and define them and make them more accurate with all the new data. So having this setup that they, we have with editing uh, the, the speed range on it, there's a clip right here where we, you can see the circle. I said I wanted to only get 85 to 120 
exit speed. The camera on your phone will play on a rollover mode and it'll only capture the videos of the swings at that time. Trey Harris on this one swung it uh, obviously 101 and it captured that video because it was within the range of the 108 to 88. So by having, uh, for you coaches that can't be in that bullpen, setting that your camera up on the tripod and saying, hey, I want to see all these pitches uh, above 88 because we're going to work on that. We're going to have our guys throw a max pen so he knows where the ball's going when he's competing at a very high level. It will capture those points for you. And not only that, but it will give you the true assessment of what that delivery is about. Because you don't want to an analyze a guy, look him over when he's at 70% off a pin. You want to see what he's doing when he's blowing his gas, when he's cut loose. This does a wonderful job by having that setting. And like I said, uh, for me at that bottom, when they asked me, what do you think about this? I said, uh, Steve, this is by far one of the most trusted pieces of technology that I have. Because it's something that, uh, that I've already verified to be accurate with other places. But to have it there, and have it be another ball coach, to call it the smart coach, uh, was a very good uh, name for the thing. Okay, guys, um, really quickly, I want to go through some stuff. Um, first off, I want to say thanks for being on the same stage with these two guys, both lifetime, lifetime learners that I've really been uh, kind of idolizing for a long time, so a lot of fun. I also want to say thanks to Pocket Radar because it... A lot of times when you get asked to do something, a demo about something and speak about it, it's kind of tough to get behind it unless you really believe in it. And this product is awesome. I love it. We did, um, way back in 2000, when this was not easy to do, I did a, a video with Jay Bell where we kind of re-engineered his swing mechanics. He was a two-time all-star, 17-year big leaguer, and we added 10 miles an hour in one setting with his exit velocity. We couldn't do exit velocity with live pitching because all it would read is the pitch coming in and that's it. So you couldn't get live exit velocity at that time. So what this product allows you to do is not only get the pitch speed coming in, but also the exit speed going out. And if you know how that process works and which body movements are doing that, this is uh, from Peru. I went down and did a little bit of work with the national team and this was just a little bit of a, a before and after. We did this with every player. We had kids going up nine miles an hour, six miles an hour, eight miles an hour. And it's about taking that mechanic, taking that, that video and actually putting it to the data and seeing which movement patterns are creating which types of, of exit velocities that you're trying to look for. The other thing about that is when the pitch speed coming in when you do the right calibration and you realize how, what distance you're at when you're doing short toss or like a, a modified soft toss, you can get to the point where you can simulate exact game speeds, but not only game speeds, but game angles. Can we go to that next one? So we're working through some stuff. This was a player that went from about 81 or 82 to 91 in about, I think it was three sessions. Because once you see what the movement patterns are that are creating that speed, and you really know what it is that you're looking for, the second you can get that player to create that new movement pattern, you're going to see that number go up. And if you can do it at live game speeds, that's something that I love about that, the, this product, being able to, to produce that. We started doing a lot of training as well with uh, pitch recognition and timing stuff. Um, this is a small diameter bat, underload, overload. And what we're working on is a bunch of different things, one of which is trying to recreate at about 20 feet the same kind of speed, the same kind of angle. Not only the angle that is coming down, but also the angle of the pitch. If you've got Madison Bumgarner on this side of the rubber and throwing from basically where the second baseman plays, it's a very different angle than you're going to see with uh, Clayton Kershaw throwing straight over the top. So at the end of the day, we can't make practice perfect like it is in a game, but we have to be able to figure out a way to make it as close as possible. So one of the things that we've been trying to uh, accomplish is to try to go with small diameter bats, the small diameter foam balls that will allow you to, to, to create those speeds. And the, the pocket radar will actually read the pitch speed coming in from 20 feet 
we can recreate angles, we can recreate movement. And so we have that ability to try to work on all of the same kinds of things that you're going to see come game time. How do you work on timing? You create the same timing that you're going to see tonight. And that's not an easy thing, throwing baseballs from 35 feet. So being able to create that movement is very difficult. One of the other um, things for me is being able to, to move this around and do it from different angles to be able to... If I've, if I've got um, my phone in my pocket and I'm attached to the radar, I can simply just hold it up and if we're working on a feel movement or we're trying to get some kind of a feel for where the locations are, I mean this is rough footage, I apologize, but it's, it's straight out of the pocket trying to figure out a way to hit a spot and, and then work on the command issue when it comes to being able to command not only the speed but also the location. So, for my money, um, I, I, it's, it's really nice to be able to talk about something that I really, really enjoy because I spent so much time in the early 90s doing exit velocity stuff with caveman tools. And so now, without having to take all the wires and move them from one place to the next, you literally have a wireless system that allows you to just simply take your phone out, hook it up, I can run the thing constantly anytime I like or dislike something that I see, you can stop it, run it through, if, you, if you've got a big screen like this, you can mirror it so that you can see and show the player, and if you're an academy person, you can show the, the parent as well, or any of the other players that, are, that you're working out with to be able to see exactly what it is that you're, that you're trying to get them to feel. Because at the end of the day, they feel it, we don't feel it, they, we see it, they don't see it, so our job is to try to get those two things on the same page. And this is one of those tools that will allow you to do that. So if anybody has any questions, we'll, I'll spend a lot of time at the booth for, for individual questions. Thank you very much for your attention. To show you, you're in trouble right now. They put the shortest guys in baseball on, on high stools. That's a bad start. <laughs> Uh, you, know, you know, the big thing for me is self-coaching. As a coach and as a teacher, the best lessons and most long-lasting lessons are self-taught. Uh, in reality, as coaches, whether we understand this or not, our job is to eliminate their job. And the one thing about this tool, it's a self-coaching tool that teaches the player how to coach themselves. I think one of the things like, for instance, if we're in a BP environment, and especially with exit speed, uh, all of a sudden a guy is getting uh, knowledge of results uh, feedback as far as uh, exit speed is concerned. So all of a sudden, now what? Now he associates, hey, that particular swing, that particular mechanic, that particular ball flight, launch angle, whatever you want to call it, well, hey, that's what I want to replicate. So now he gets immediate feedback where he can coach himself and he associates that particular mechanic with the type of, of uh, contact he wants to make. If you could throw that chart up there for just a second, that'd be great. You know, from day one in baseball, you take the dead ball era, 1909 to 1919, what did they tell hitters? Hey, dude, get a good pitch to hit and hit it hard. You know, they didn't talk about launch angle or anything else, but what I'm trying to show you here with this little uh, velocity chart is, you know, based on, the, in descending order, you can see that based on exit speed, extra base hit percentage, batting average on balls in play, average on base percentage, slugging percentage, OPS, uh, and total balls in play, the harder you hit the ball, the better results you're going to get. This is irrespective of take launch angle out of the, the equation. Now, I'm not saying that launch angle is not important because then all of a sudden you start with batting practice and knowledge of results and they find, with, hey, I got this exit speed and this launch angle. You know, I'm, I'm impacting the ball to a higher degree. So they, they put A to B, important. One of the things, I mean, for me, I, I'll use it in, in three areas. I use it with catchers. I, I think periodic... Uh, uh, I'm a big believer in throwing velocity, not only with, with uh, pitchers, infielders, but catchers as well. And so we're, we're trying to, you know, if you take a, a, a one nine th five throw to second base, uh, ball flight is about 64% of the, the, the 1.95. Uh, it's about 1.20. And so what we do in, in, in previous, before we had, uh, had this particular instru instrument, uh, we would have our radar gun out there and we'd get the speed of the pitch and it would get confused with the speed of the pitch and the throw. Now we can just set it so 
you know, my 60 mile an hour doesn't register, but that guy's 75 to 80 plus will register so we can get, we can get uh, velocity. Because, you know, in a, in a throwing situation with catchers, our first teach is how to, how to uh, attain max velocity. And then we work back to a sweet spot in terms of release and accuracy, but we don't want to sacrifice velocity so we can get feedback. They can have it themselves. They can do it themselves. They have it out there. They're getting immediate feedback. Uh, from a pitching standpoint, uh, one of the nice things, if you're working on speed differentials, you can just set it out there, guys in a flat ground or in a bullpen, and he can work on if he's trying to get a minus 10 uh, spread between his changeup and his fastball or a, a contact changeup at minus 7, say, and a swing and miss changeup at minus 15, and he's working on different grips, then he can associate change in mechanics with the change in, in, in performance. Uh, in the batting practice environment, you can have a competitive environment in terms of, hey, if you don't get particular this particular exit speed, you're out of there. And I, th I think we all have, you know, hard hit rounds where we reward guys with extra swings and they're always fighting over, dude, that was a bullet. No, that wasn't a bullet. Now we have a, a more de defined uh, uh, number where we can, we, we can really delineate exactly and quantify exactly what we're doing. Uh, one of the nice things, especially, uh, I assume we have some high school and, and, uh, and below coaches in here, uh, that you can get a feedback in the dugout relative to, you can have it set behind uh, home plate, get a read out of the pitcher in the game. And so now, from a hitting standpoint, you're not, you're not, I mean, there are a number of times a hitter will go up to the plate and they have one perspective from the side. Hey, this guy's throwing, you know, certain velocity and they kind of, get their load and their rhythm set on that guy's velocity. All of a sudden they get up to the plate, and, oh, this guy's a lot quicker than, than what I thought he was. Now you get a specific quantifiable velocity in the dugout before you go up to the plate so you know, hey, I'm gonna have to load a little bit sooner, this guy's throwing a little bit harder, or I can load a little bit later. So from a time, rhythm, timing, and balance standpoint, that improves you as a hitter, but also evaluating your own pitcher as a coach. Uh, you know, maybe you don't see a loss in velocity, but all of a sudden now he's started out 85, 86, all of a sudden he's 81, 82. Well, is there a problem here? You know, is it physical? Is he out of, out of gas, whatever? So I think that has uh, application. The nice thing about this tool, uh, it's very portable, it's very accurate, and it's, it's very reasonable. And so there's a lot of areas that you can use it, and uh, it's, it's only limited by your creativity. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, a bunch of great stuff, guys. I appreciate that. Um, and I want to uh, go ahead and start, if we could, with uh, some questions from the audience. And, uh, and uh, feel free to raise your hand and direct your questions at any, any, any of the coaches up here. You had asked about what they were doing with it or the product or anything. OK, the question was, I believe, can this be used for, uh, to the dugout? Yeah, one of the. Um, one of the powerful advantages of this new uh, Bluetooth connection between the radar and your phone or your tablet is it has up to 100 feet of range between the phone and the radar. So you can set your radar, the radar device, up behind uh, the backstop and then wirelessly be getting the speeds over by the dugout. All you got to do is pay attention to how far away the dugout is. And if you get a lot of metal fences in the way, you got to be careful. You know, it's like any Bluetooth device, like a headset. You just got to make sure. But the dugout, you should be able to find a location either outside the dugout fence or maybe in the dugout if it's close enough uh, to get the speeds fed over there. Um, so that was one of the uh, powerful applications to be remote from the radar gun, be sitting somewhere else. And the sound uh, feature of it is cool because you can wear an ear set and do it privately as well so no one would see what the speeds are. You know, to, to add on that, uh, Steve, uh, uh, while at uh, Lake Point, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with Lake Point, I imagine a lot of you, uh, setting uh, the pocket radar in the back uh, and with that netting, I was able to go completely to the outside of uh, the dugout on the other side and get uh, the prospect from uh, their open side because I wanted to see obviously mechanical efficiencies of uh, their open side while still having the radar gun read from behind home plate uh, embedded. Though they have it on the scoreboard, it was nice to have it on the video, like I said, to communicate with Lance Rhodes and Coach Beezer about this guy's arm speed and velocity as well. So it will go, uh, for me, I, I estimated it to be a little over 100 feet, but like I said, depending on netting or uh, regular metal fence, that'll probably reduce the Bluetooth. Correct. Any other um, questions out there? Oh. 
Yeah, normal, um, normal Bluetooth functionality connects an individual device to an individual de device. Just like your headset only talks to your phone and you don't get to hear anybody else's conversation, this is exactly the same kind of encrypted privacy. So the speeds only go to your phone. Uh, so it's private and no one can snoop on uh, what you're doing. Uh, although that'd be a cool thing to be able to do, huh? <laughs> So you're thinking multiple smartphones or tablets at once and feed the speed? Um, <clears throat> currently it can't, but the beauty of the app is that we're going to keep innovating with the app. And once it's in an app, the software can be developed and improved. It's our intention to keep adding value to this, this platform and have uh, hopefully multiple times a year eventually have up, uh, updates on the app that will give you more and more features. Now actually I have one of, the, one of the things about the smart devices nowadays, as you all know, is there's so many apps available on the Play Store and the App Store that uh, I found that you can use things to uh, add more power to this platform. For example, I used an um, eSports game, game casting system once that could um, basically take a speed from my screen and stream it to as many devices across the world. I did that and I had it to like five computers in our office streaming from my phone into multiple locations. So that can be done with other applications you just load on your phone. No, the uh, app, it does not work with the old, the question was, does the app work with the old models? Uh, no, it, it does, and that's why we had to re-engineer the hardware to put Bluetooth capability in there and a lot of extra circuitry to talk Bluetooth. Uh, but the good news is, is that, as many of you know, we will we'll take a hundred, we'll give you all a hundred dollar credit on any old pocket radar product you have toward the purchase of the great deal we got downstairs. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, it's sort of compatible in that sense. <laughs> 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 question is, how long had the battery usually last. Uh, are you a pocket radar user right now? Yeah, so most of you that have used our products know that those AAA batteries, depending how you use them, you have to pay attention to, you know, uh, replacing the batteries or using rechargeable batteries. We heard that a lot from coaches. And so the AAA batteries are in there because to make it small, obviously, there was a compromise. So in the new device, we listened, and now there's a micro USB connector on the side for alternate power sources. It doesn't charge the batteries, but now anything that powers up a micro USB based device can power this. So we tested the ch phone charger packs that everybody carries around nowadays to charge your phone. The device will run off of those packs. The small ones will run the radar six hours continuously. The big brick sized ones, we have one go 50 hours. So now if you put those together as a system on a tripod, you can run an entire weekend, an entire showcase events continuously. So the battery power is not an issue anymore, which is a nice new feature. Yeah, the reason, is, the reason why it doesn't work with the old model, because it turns out you have to put a lot of extra electronic componentry in a device to make it uh, talk Bluetooth to the smartphones and tablets. And so we had to redesign the entire hardware and add more expense to it uh, to make the, that's why this new model is required to talk Bluetooth. Well, I'll tell you this background story. The, when police officers use uh, radar for speed enforcement, they have to take like hours of training to realize about weird things like ghost readings. Our radar is just like a police radar. It's accurate. It has the same vulnerabilities that if you point to certain noise sources, you will get occasional readings. So one of the most common ones nowadays is cell phone towers. If I take my soccer gun or my pocket radar or any other radar and I point it in the vicinity of a cell tower, I'll get numbers like 28, 56, 84, and 112. And so there's certain ball fields that people can't even scout on, no matter what kind of radar gun they have, because they're, someone put a cell phone tower on the center field light post, right where you're aiming your radar gun, unfortunately. Now, the new thing about this app, and we knew about that, and those ghost readings, we were trying to figure out how to improve that. So the app, like um, Fred alluded to, has this filter range. You can set speed ranges in the app now and leave out certain. So that's going to be a powerful tool to avoid some of those readings. Uh, in fact, in some cases, maybe everything you're dealing with, you can deal with. Uh, that way. But usually it's interference. The price? Okay. Um, the retail price outside of the convention special is, it was $300 on the ball coach model, the blue button one that many of you had. This one is $100 more. It's $400 outside. Uh, but here we got a fantastic special. It's uh, a $500 package for $150 off. And if you own a previous product, there's a $100 credit, even knocking it down to basically half off here uh, with the package. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody else right now, but like I said, um, there's a lot more detail behind what uh, these guys have done with the product. There's just a lot of detail in some of the program stuff they're doing, especially some of the, um, the clever ways they've applied the product. Uh, they'll be at the booth for further questions. If, yeah. You. Yeah, Steve. Uh, you know, they, 
You, you gave me eight minutes to talk, and I had six and a half on my watch, so I got a minute and a half to still uh, <laughs> okay. give you on this. Go for but it. But one of the things that I wanted to share is that, you know, uh, the thing is, is that, yeah, they call it the smart coach. The thing I do know that a lot of high school coaches, a lot of JC coaches, you don't have that uh, extra assistant. They should call it the extra coach as well, because one of the things that it has done for me with that sliding scale, we have managers, uh, fortunately, at uh, the University of Missouri that can break down our video through uh, uh, the tagging of videos, through all this stuff. And uh, with this app itself, it does it on its own, like uh, Steve alluded to, and like I mentioned on where you set that dial, it now, like I said, it operates, but it only cuts up an eight second clip of that. So it basically gives you a video editor on your coaching staff uh, with that type of unit. Now, uh, you know, when they asked about the price, uh, I don't get paid for anything that I'm telling you. I get fired up when, one, I know other athletes are getting better uh, across the way. And one of the things that I will say is the price of this is probably about 10 pancake breakfast tickets. And it'll be well worth it. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm also sitting up here thinking that if there's anything I could do to help anybody that needed one of those, uh, it's, it's that important to me. Uh, and uh, I would say that any questions that you have down there at that booth, uh, uh, feel free to uh, say, because we use it in a great number of ways. And uh, it's, a, like I said, a very valuable tool. It's an accommodating tool. It's, it's cool. Thanks, Fran. I want to know why it's always about food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Thanks for being here. Um, uh, any other last minute questions before I wrap up? Okay. I'm going to call that Q&A session closed. Um, well, thanks again for uh, listening to the presentation. Uh, reminding you again, I, I talked about it earlier, but we have a great deal, as we always do for all you coaches. We have you know, uh, prices at the convention that you won't see outside ever especially if you're an owner of a previous generation product that's worth an extra hundred off. So it's effectively almost a half price deal, if not a half price deal, if you have a previous unit. Uh, please come to the booth, check it out, talk to us. Um, we brought um, a limited quantity to the show. We usually sell out in the first day or two. So if you're thinking at all about picking up one, um, definitely come on down earlier. Uh, if we do sell out, we'll figure out a way to take care of it otherwise, but it's much easier if we just grab and go with it here. So definitely come on down, um, talk to us. Um, anyway, thanks again, and thanks again to our panelists. Here. Appreciate you guys having the time to tell us about what you we're doing with our products. So, thanks everybody. Take care.